Welcome everybody, welcome to our special Christmas Eve candlelight service. It's something we haven't really done here at Central Community Church. Not like this. But I want to welcome all of you to our worship service this Christmas Eve. It's a holy night to, to really celebrate Christ's birth. My name is Malcolm Bullock and I'm honored to be the pastor here at Central Community Church. And I'll be leading us in worship tonight. So I really want to thank you all for joining us. Let's put the lighting of the Advent candles, which we'll be doing a little bit later. But today, this evening, this is the time to light the Advent candles. This past Sunday was the final Sunday of Advent, and we lit, on that day, we lit four candles. The candle of hope, which is a purple candle. The candle of love, which is a purple candle. And then we lit the pink candle, which is the candle of joy. And finally, last week, we lit the can another purple candle, the candle of peace. And tonight, on this Christmas Eve night, we now will be lighting the white candle, the Christ candle, which symbolizes, folks, it symbolizes the light, along with the hope, love, joy, and peace. It symbolizes the light that Christ brought into this world. So please pray with me now as we, as we open our time together on this very, very special evening. Almighty God, Lord, we thank you for the birth of, of the Christ child in Bethlehem, as announced by the angels on this, on this very holy night. Lord, and may the mystery of the word made flesh fill our souls with wonder and yearning and change our hearts from, a, from that busy inn to a, a quiet chamber for your glory. And may we who are gathered here online tonight in song with the angels, share the delight of the shepherds and may we adore him with the wise men. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now you join me in singing Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let her receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And to heaven and heaven and nature. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy.
Joy to the world. Wow, I love singing that song. Hopefully, folks, I told people about it during the week, but hopefully you've acquired some candles, some white candles, just candles even, or even those electric battery candles. Those would be great too. We're going to be lighting these a little bit later to remind us of Christ's light that spread through all throughout all creation and touched each one of us. Each one of us. So as you're getting those ready and preparing, let's join together now and sing. Oh, come. O come, Emmanuel.
Isaiah 9, verses 2 and 6 through 7. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. And the government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. His rule will his rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen.
We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. We travel so far, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to Thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again, king. Forever ceasing, never over a soul to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh. Prayer and praising all men, raising worship in God most high. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. West we're leading, still proceeding. Guide us to Thy perfect light. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume. Breeze of life, of gathering gloom. Sorrow sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone cold tomb. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. West we're leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect. Glorious now, behold him rise, King and God in sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, bird to and replies. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. West we're leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. We now read from John 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The 
first Noel The angel did say Was to certain poor shepherds In fields as they lay In fields where they Lay keeping the sheep On a cold winter's night That was so deep They looked up And saw a star Shining in the east Beyond them far And to the earth It gave great light And so it continued Both day and night And by the light Of that same star Three wise men came From country afar To seek for a King was there to follow the star wherever it went this star drew nigh to the northwest or Bethlehem it took its rest and there it did pull stop We have heard all night Sweetly singing all the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strains Gloria In excelsis Deo Oh, yeah. In next 
Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be Which inspire your heavenly song? Gloria In excelsis day Or on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Thank you, Nathan. Angels, we have heard on high. Thank you, brother. You know, let's think a bit about light. We've been talking about that since we started the message this evening. Think about what is it like to be in a dark room? Scary? Yeah. Cold? Unsure? Anxious? Boring? What's it like when you or someone else finally in that dark room, they flip on a light? It's relief, isn't it? It's relief. You can see, you're reassured. Things aren't so scary anymore. So what does light do? Why, why is light important? Well, it enables you to see. It, it lights the way. It brings warmth and comfort. And basically, without it, you're blind. You're, you're walking in a shadow. You're walking in darkness. And where does light come from? What are some sources of light? Well, there's light bulbs, there's flashlights, there's flames, there's the sun and the moon. See, in the passage we read from, just read from John 1, Christ is described as the light of the world shining in the darkness. I thought about, my, I thought about that and I said, well, I wonder what that might mean. I wonder what that might mean. How is Christ like light in our dark world? So let's think back to the very beginning of the Bible. 
Genesis 1 verses 1 through 3 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And after God made light, God made something else. He did? Yeah. What was that, Malcolm? Genesis 1.26 says he made people. He made us. As the Bible says, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So, who carries God's image? Who? Well, all of us, me and you, all of us do. Because you are made in the image of God, folks, because you are made in the image of God, Every single one of you carries within you a bit of Jesus' light. You see that? God's spirit of light and love, it lives within you. Scripture tells us to let our light shine, not to hide them under a, under a basket or a bushel. Matthew 5, 4 through, and 14 through 16 says this, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. See, we all have, a, we all have light to share, no matter our situations, no matter our health, our age, or our ability. As long as you have breath, you have light to share. So now at this point of our evening, I would like you to get your candles ready and join with me as we prepare to light our candles. And now folks, we're gonna light the four candles uh, that we've already gone through through the Advent season. The first candle we're going to light is the first candle we lit, which is the candle of hope. The second candle we light is the candle of love. The third candle we'll light is the pink candle, which is the candle of joy. And the fourth candle we lit last week is the candle of love. Today, we're lighting the Christ candle, the middle candle, the white candle, which sits in the middle. As we see the candles, folks, as we see them lit, I hope you can see that on the camera. How would you like to see more light in, in your world? More light in our world? What can we be praying about and asking God together this evening, this Christmas evening? So I would like us all now to take some time to pray silently about these hopes and needs for a moment. And then I will lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. And now let us pray the Lord's Prayer together, folks. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Luke 2, verses 1 through 20. And I know this is always read, but this is a special evening. It's a perfect time to read this, the birth of Jesus. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. Now, this was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. 
And suddenly, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom God has pleased. And when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried to the village and they found Mary and Joseph and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks by night Behold throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born the shepherds feared and tremble when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that held the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born And God sent us salvation That blessed Christmas morn Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain Jesus Christ is born Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born.
Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, very famous poet from the 1800s, and he wrote this well-known poem in 1864, right in the middle of the Civil War. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each dark, accursed mouth, the cannon thundered in the south, and with the sound the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair, I bowed my head there is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. So bring a 
On December, on December 7th, 1914, I'm sure some of you heard this story before, but it's very interesting. Pope Benedict XV suggested a temporary ceasefire of World War I for the celebration of Christmas. Now the warring countries refused to create any official ceasefire, but on Christmas, the soldiers in the trenches declared their own unofficial truce. So starting on Christmas Eve, many German and British troops sang Christmas carols to each other across the lines. And at certain points, the Allied soldiers even heard brass bands joining the Germans in their, in their joyous singing. At the first light of dawn on Christmas Day, some German soldiers emerged from their, tren from their trenches and they approached the Allied lines across no man's land, calling out loudly, Merry Christmas in English. At first, the Allied soldiers feared that this is a trick. But seeing the Germans unarmed, they climbed out of their trenches and they shook hands with the German soldiers. Now the men exchanged presents of cigarettes and plum puddings and they sang carols and songs. There's even a documented case of soldiers from opposing sides playing a good-natured game of soccer. This so-called Christmas truce in 1914 came only five months after the start of this war in Europe and was one of the last examples of chivalry between enemies in warfare. It was never repeated. It was never repeated. Officers, the officers stopped future attempts at holiday ceasefires with threats of disciplinary action. But it served as a heartening proof, as heartening proof, however brief, that beneath the brutal clash of weapons and bloodshed, God's gift of peace endured. Folks, if you are in your room right now, dim your lights a little bit. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Dim your lights You can see my face. How does your candlelight look different when we dim the lights a little bit? Does it look like this? I imagine this would be even brighter if we had all the lights out. When you make the darkness, the light shines even brighter. On this moly, most holy night, long ago in the city of Bethlehem, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, was born. Jesus brought his own life, and the life was the light of all the people. See, the light shines in the darkness. Folks, in the darkness has not overcome it. Savior is born 
Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from Thy holy face, with the dawn. Folks, that concludes our short service tonight. I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank all those that have been blessing us for this past year. It's been a difficult couple of years for us, and I'm, it looks like we're going to go through a little bit of more difficult times. But keep praying. Keep understanding that no matter what circumstance you're going through, God is always with you. You are the light of this world. Jesus' light shines through you. It shines through you. And so may the blessing of this holy light be upon you tonight, but not just tonight, always. So I pray that you all now, you go in peace. Have a wonderful Christmas day with your family and friends. Take care of each other. Be safe. And just be joyous in the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Have a wonderful, blessed time, folks. Thank you. Amen. Bye-bye now. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas.